Today we are just outside of the State House cafeteria uh, looking at what is not a new piece of art necessarily to our collection but what is uh, relatively new to the building here over the last couple months since the session started. Um, this is a, a beautiful uh, oil and canvas painting called Night Mowing by Vermont artist Eric Ajo. Eric is one of our uh, best and most well-known artists here in the state of Vermont. He hails from uh, Saxton's River and uh, has had pieces that are shown the last five to ten years all over New England. Um, he's in a number of galleries in New York City. He had a show in DC. He's over the, the years and decades has shown in, in places like Ireland and South Africa and um, Cuba, Norway, Finland. Um, certainly there is a, a great desire uh, for folks to see his work. Um, best known probably sort of for an abstract sort of painting um, that evokes natural forms. So this again is, is depicting um, what I assume to be Vermont. Uh, again is titled Night Mowing. Um, so it's sort of this beautifully haunting um, piece of, of mowing happening at, at night here. Um, this actually came to the state into our possession in 2007 as part of the Art in State Buildings program. And its original um, location was 133 State Street, better known to a lot of people as the, where the tax department building is here. And uh, it was on a floor that was open to the public. We wanted to be sure that because of the importance of this piece that the public could see it uh, up on one of the upper levels there. Eventually due to security, that was locked down and it was moved to a lower hallway uh, where the public could access it within the last year or two. That hallway now has been um, taken offline to the public. And so when the opportunity arose to hang something in this location, uh, the large, more colorful Thelma Appel painting that had been here uh, has just come back into our collection and had been out for three or four months on loan uh, for a show of, of her works. So we wanted to find something big that, that really stood out and, and um, you know, had a story to tell here in this space. And so we decided to move this from a space where the public could not see it any longer at 133 State Street over here and, and set it here outside the cafeteria. Our intention currently is, is to keep it up. Um, we've gotten quite a bit of good feedback about it. Um, it's not a piece, if it does move around somewhere else, it's not a piece that we want to have somewhere that's behind closed doors again um, because it is uh, not only a beautiful piece, but Eric Ajo, again, is one of our uh, more important contemporary artists here in Vermont. So it's something that we... Uh, that we want to make sure that the public can, uh, can appreciate and enjoy here. So when you do find yourself here wandering around the State House, if you're coming up to the cafeteria for lunch or something, um, you may not have even noticed that this piece is up, but um, don't just walk by it. Take a couple minutes, take it in. Um, it's a really, really beautiful piece, and uh, we're happy to have it here on display where the public can check it out. Wayne, can you go back home? <laughs> that's, that's, that's what they've all been saying. As far as I'm concerned, there is it all Do you want to leave this fancy place? <laughs> you want to leave this fancy place? Is that what you said? <laughs> it's not all that fancy. Hi, I'm David Zuckerman. I'm Lieutenant Governor of Vermont, 
And uh, I've been on your program many times and always happy to give my, my two cents about what's going on here at the State House. Uh, this week is a busy week. Uh, the House uh, just passed the override uh, of the governor's veto of the minimum wage bill. The Senate had done that uh, prior with a 24 to 6 vote, 80 percent. The House then also got the override, uh, whiskering over the two-thirds number by 100 to 49. And I'm really glad they did. Uh, three quarters of Vermonters believe that this wage increase or even a larger one uh, is needed for working Vermonters who are struggling to pay their bills and their heating bills and their rent or their mortgage, car payments, food, you know, all the things that people have to pay uh, every single month when they're working minimum wage, it's been really hard to do that. And a lot of folks are still living in the uh, days when youth were the primary minimum wage workers and it was a high school job and you were learning how to do workforce uh, while you're in high school making a little bit of money to bring home with your family uh, but now the majority of minimum wage workers are actually primary wage earners the majority are women uh, who often have children that they're also trying to care for so it's critically important as we talk about how difficult it is to make ends meet in Vermont to make sure working people are getting a pay raise that will help them meet their bills so very very pleased that the governor's veto has has been overridden. Uh, there's also legislation on the floor in the House right now around cannabis reform. Uh, that's an issue I've worked on for about 25 years. Uh, led the way on medical cannabis through a Republican House and a Republican governor back in 2000, I believe it was three. Uh, we expanded it in 2006 and we finally got to the point now where we're finally talking about bringing the underground market above board, changing the whole situation with our criminal and justice system, and really being able to maybe put money back into the hands of Vermonters and uh, and making it be something where we can address the issue with reality for our young people and uh, maybe put resources towards youth programs and so forth to give kids something to do rather than going down the path of maybe drugs for entertainment or uh, satiating uh, other issues that happen in society. So that's a great conversation that's happening. Uh, and then the uh, Climate Solutions Bill also passed the House this week, so that'll be coming over to the Senate shortly, uh, where the Senate will take it up as well. And uh, that's a critically important bill to really start putting benchmarks into statute so that Vermont just can't live on our laurels of we've been a good state for the environment and actually go okay the future demands more we're going to put real benchmarks in statute and that way if the state doesn't uh, do the job our citizens can hold the state accountable uh, unfortunately that seems to be what's necessary given that the um, uh, the ability to move policies forward and the lack of leadership from the administration on significant uh, legislation to help Vermont with a climate economy uh, has really been stalled for the last few years. Um, so those are some issues that are going on. Uh, folks are always welcome to reach out to Lieutenant Governor's Office at 828 2226. If you have thoughts about what's going on in Montpelier, uh, things that you need addressed or that uh, you want to offer your opinions to me on, please call 828-2226. Our office will either try to help with my one chief of staff. We do as much as we can, but it's a lot. But also, we may be able to reach out to your legislator, help connect you with your legislator or senator who might also be able to help you. Uh, sometimes it's easier, more people know us than they do their own legislator. So I just want to make us uh, a possible conduit for you to find your legislator or to tackle an issue you have with the state. Really appreciate the time. Uh, thank you very much. Well, I'm John Kalaki. I'm representative of South Burlington in the House of Representatives here, and I'm, it's been a great week. My committee is General Housing and Military Affairs, and so we had a big victory this week. We, the minimum wage bill started in our committee, uh, and it was incredibly moving yesterday to be able to overwrite the governor's veto on that because raising the minimum wage to $12.55 over two years is not a big step but it really works on giving people a raise. 40,000 people needed that raise, and it's, it's great that I could be part of that with my colleagues. Other things in our committee, it's been a lot about dignity and humanity for people. We've been working on a uh, homeless bill of rights to make sure that they are part of a protected class that they're not discriminated against merely because they, have, they are without a home. And there's a lot of stigma attached and a lot of fear attached around this. So we've been getting great testimony on that. We've also been working on an apology coming from the state about the eugenics movement of the 1930s and the legislation and the research that targeted different communities uh, 
had sterilization procedures put in place, had people who were institutionalized, some people were put in prison, families were broken up, and it just broke for generations of trauma. So it's been interesting to, to get testimony about that and figure out what is really something that's significant the state can do instead of just apologize. So we've been working on that and the next steps as well because sorry is not enough for something that profoundly disturbing that's happened in our own history. It's a very dark part of Vermont's history. Also been working on a, uh, a recovery bill for people that um, are dealing with substance use disorders and to make sure there's right now there's no regulation of recovery homes across the state and studies have been done and we need about another thousand beds. So how can we encourage the, in the increase in this but have standards, have clarity for towns about what zoning should be, have rights for people who are residents in recovery homes. Uh, it's really important because uh, a reality of recovery is there is recurrence. Unfortunately that happens. So what's the due process? And if someone has to be temporarily removed from a recovery home, and also, unfortunately, they have to be permanently removed. We want to make sure everyone has rights in those issues. So we've been working on all of those issues, and it's kind of wonderful to think about we're really dealing with humanity and giving people a chance in Vermont. So it works for all of us. Hi, I'm Dick McCormick. I represent the Windsor County Senate District. I serve in the mornings on health and welfare, and I serve in the afternoon on appropriations. Uh, but I think right now the most exciting uh, news of the legislature, uh, I'm talking to you on the uh, 26th of, of February, is that yesterday the, uh, the House of Representatives overrode uh, the governor's veto of the minimum wage bill and uh, increased the minimum wage. Uh, and, and I th they are to be congratulated for that. There's a lot of a debate about that. There were people who thought that raising the minimum wage would um, uh, um, hurt small businesses. I, I, I am not convinced of that. That is not the way it has happened in other jurisdictions. Um, it, it sounds reasonable. The thing, oh, we oh, it's going to it's going to hurt business. It, it seems not to in, in in other states that have done that. And when the national um, back in the good old days when the, the national minimum wage meant something. Um, but also, for me, it really gets down to a very basic, basic moral principle, which is a day's work deserves a day's pay. And that, of course, then gets to the, the, the question of um, did we raise the minimum wage enough? And a lot of people, I guess, correctly point out that, that it was really, it's not much. Uh, it's, it's very unlikely that, uh, that uh, you could live on even the, the, the new improved minimum wage. My answer on that to people is that you know, who say we should have pushed harder, and I would have liked a higher minimum wage, is that the vote in the House was 100 votes to override, not 101 and you need 100 votes to override. So I think that the House leadership compromised exactly as much as they needed to and not a, not a bit more, and, and I say good for them. Uh, in, in the Senate, we are, um, in the Senate appropriations, we divvy up the, uh, the budget, the state budget, so that each member of the committee is responsible uh, for various parts of the budget. I have uh, the Agency of Education and I have the Tax Department and the Labor Department among, and also um, various, many other uh, factors, but those are the, the big ones. And I, um, besides hearing the whole committee hears from various uh, commissioners and secretaries and operatives, but um, also then committee members meet directly with uh, people from these various agencies and departments. And um, that's what I've been, I've been coming in every morning uh, early before my committee time and having breakfast with one or another bureaucrat. And I don't use the term bureaucrat as an epithet. People do use the word bureaucrat as an insult. Also, politician, I think. Um, those are worthy endeavors. Bureaucrats or administrators are the people we hire to implement our laws. And um, yeah, citizens come up against them from time to time and are frustrated, but that's what it's like to live in a, in a representative uh, democratic republic like ours. Uh, so too with politicians. I'm proud to be a politician. We, the people, organize ourselves into a polity. 
that has policy and the people who develop policy are politicians and I consider it about as worthy and noble a work as I could do except maybe being a, a folk singer uh, <laughs> but uh, in any case um, we're, we're working on, on the budget uh, the people have all sorts of demands, but people also hate paying taxes. So we have a, a, a cap. It's not a constitutional or legal cap, but it's a, it's an effective from a pragmatic cap. You can only spend so much because you start taxing too much, the people are going to show up at night with torches and pitchforks. Um, which means we, a lot of what it means to be on appropriations is deciding who to say no to. Or who to say, yeah, okay, but not quite what you wanted. And then we do a lot of that. Um, health and welfare, um, we, we, what we have been dealing with, uh, I'm reporting a bill tomorrow for the Health and Welfare Committee on getting Vermont into the Interstate Nurses Compact so that nurses from other states can uh, work here without having to get a Vermont license, that their license will be recognized here, and Vermont nurses can work elsewhere. It was interesting because we hear from experts, we hear from activists and lobbyists, we hear from bureaucrats, um, but uh, we also, I try to hear from people um, with their feet on the ground doing the work that we're legislating for. And uh, my ex-wife is a nurse. So I just contacted her and said, what, what do you think of the nurses compact? And she gave me some very good advice. In particular, we have something called travelers, traveling nurses who come in from out of state and tend to get paid more than the locals. And um, I said to, to, to my ex, I said, how do you feel, do you, do you resent the the travelers getting paid more and she said um, maybe I should but we really need nurse nurses we're down 5,000 nurses in Vermont uh, we're, we're short 5,000 so this is addressing that and and uh, nurses at least one nurse I spoke with seems to think that that, that meeting that need is more important than the resentment that might come from not being paid as well. And of course they're traveling so their expenses are, are more. Um, I guess that's about it for now. I'm hearing that double bell. That means I have to go to the Senate and spend other people's money. Bye. Hey Rick, thanks again for having me on to your little your uh, show. Is that what you call it? A show? Um, I'm Jay Hooper. I represent the five towns of Brookfield, Braintree, Randolph, Granville, and Roxbury. I serve on the House Education Committee. Uh, and today we voted out the universal pre-k bill we're sending it to the human services committee it's a little bit of a dumpster fire <laughs> so hopefully they can extinguish that fire and uh, figure out how to fix whatever we didn't um, but it's been a difficult conversation to make progress on every day we seem to make a decision that brings in new testimony from the agencies and the various advocacy groups uh, and they say you know you can't go this direction or else you're gonna create all these new problems it's interesting the legislature is always trying to excuse me, legislate our way out of the issues that we've created in the past and oftentimes the things that we pass create a whole new category of issues in the future um, but I'm happy that we got it out of committee, seeing that we have town meeting day coming up, and then shortly thereafter we have the deadline for crossover when the bills switch chambers. Um, so it's sort of like, sorry to Human Services for sending you a bill so late in the game, but, um, well, we took probably the bulk of the testimony. Hopefully you guys will be able to deal with it quicker. Uh, and then, of course, as my chair continually reminds our committee, uh, there's another several stops before this train gets to its destination, if it should even make it that far. Um, I'm going to tell you about something that happened on the floor today, if you don't mind. I was very proud of two, uh, two constituents of mine who came to the building 
um, for devotions today. They were the Mickey Richardson, Mickey and Neil Richardson, uh, came so that Mickey could give the devotional. Uh, she said a little prayer and said something to the something along the lines of, "I hope God blesses the members of this body as we and and has them listening to us as we would uh, hope that you're listening to us, God. That is." Um, and they didn't realize that they were going to be receiving a resolution today, a House Concurrent Resolution recognizing the two of them uh, for being the latest recipients of the NAACP's Lifetime Achievement Award down in Rutland um, because of their work as uh, activists on civil rights issues since the 1960s. Um, and in preparing for my introduction, on the floor today um, of them. I th watched an interview of the two of them being interviewed by a high school student or something. Um, and they were telling their story and I thought, geez, these people are truly inspiring. And I think I might write to them later this evening via snail mail to say, hey, I want you to know that I thank you for your work and your, your lifetime achievement, I think, was probably well deserved. And uh, you're an inspiration to young people like me who uh, hope to carry on the, the baton and continue to fight for social equity in society and in this country and in this state. Um, so thank you to Mickey and Neil Richardson. Have a great day, Rick. Well, um, my name is Senator Ruth Hardy and I represent Addison County and uh, Rick asked me to talk to you all about um, the artwork in the State House um, and the reason that he asked me to talk to you about that is because I have a bill that would require a, a um, work on diversifying the artwork in the State House and by what I mean what I mean by that is that as if you've been to the State House you may have noticed that there are hundreds of portraits of mostly former governors and some generals and some other people in politics, but they're almost all older white men. So my goal is to diversify the portraits in the State House to include a broader spectrum of Vermonters who have been important to the history of this building and the history of our state. Um, there are only three women who have portraits right now in the State House, and I think there should be more. Um, there are no people of color who have portraits in the State House, and I think obviously there should be more. And that maybe we can diversify the artwork itself to cover things that aren't necessarily portraiture and also to make sure that we are thinking about the artists themselves and um, diversifying the artists. Um, so I'm happy to report that this bill passed out of committee today out of the Senate Institutions Committee and Senator Benning was a huge um, supporter and worked really hard on making sure this bill got through his committee so I'm really grateful to him and I'm looking forward to it coming to the Senate floor. Um, and so there you have it, artwork in the State House. Come visit and see for yourself. Yes.